okay so hello everybody i'd like to welcome all the students here mm. uh, so let us directly get to the point so the problem is since uh, ever since we have started this channel the initiative uh, called the uncertainty principle we have got queries from many physics students and if i sum the queries up then the basic question is what to do after bsc in physics okay so for some students the target is clear but they do not know the route how to get there for some students the target is itself confusing they uh, do not know what to do after uh, bsc in physics and after that they will choose in between them but first of all they want to make a uh, want to have a clear picture about what uh, destinations are there after i complete my bsc in physics so i think uh, it will be good if uh, deepjyoti gives all of us a general introduction about what actually a student can do after bsc in physics and how he can make up his mind that which route to follow okay and uh, okay sorry i uh, forgot to introduce deepjyoti although i think that it is not necessary but still deepjyoti dev is uh, one of the very very important members of our team the uncertainty principle and uh, he can mentor students very well so that's why he is asset of our channel and uh, presently he is in germany and he is working as a startup mentor and international startup ambassador and he is from physics background he is uh, doing his research in uh, quantum technology so i hand i'd like to hand over the mic to dikshit thank you um what i would also suggest to all of you is if you have any questions while we discuss the topic do not hesitate to uh, first write down in the chat if it's uh, something that you would like to discuss also write it in the chat and we can try to find out a way to unmute and and talk about that question as well so the first thing while studying physics we have to especially in a country like india what we have to consider is what are the constraints a student is facing when i uh, consider my parents when my father was studying for him one of the biggest constraint was financial uh, stability so for him it was very important that he had to get a job within as limited time as possible so when you study physics when you are at the end of your studying if you see that situation is under extreme stress that you have to get a job as soon as possible or you have to earn money as soon as possible that is one uh, very specific scenario the other scenario is that you see in your family there is a buffer for 2 3 4 years within which you can carry forward studying without earning any money if that's a scenario i would definitely say it makes sense to go for a masters degree um, depending on your interest you can think about doing mtech which is more based on uh, going into a technology route than only doing research or you can also go for msc where you basically go even deeper into the topic and um, try to build your competence to do research which you can do while you do your phd or when you prepare for uh, applying for phd that for me is a very baseline where you can start now you can say what are the topics i can do masters on um, fortunately if you study physics or most of the natural sciences which means uh, chemistry mathematics and so on there are quite a lot of opening in context of you can uh, go into the iits or apply in the iits you can uh, try to apply in the nits at present there are quite a lot of nits and then you can also match in context of subject so it means you can medical physics where you can uh, if you have long term vision to go into a career in medical physics you can even train yourself to become uh, someone who is a radiologist so a radiologist is someone who can uh, precisely 
fixed doses uh, or uh, can identify what are the risks when someone is exposed to radiation and, and uh, so on, especially in context of cancer research. Whereas you can also go into area of defense. So DRDO is uh, one of the places where a lot of physicists uh, end up. So I must say that the um, opportunity you can get after studying physics is quite broad. So what you can do is not a constraint. The constraint is A, how much time you have, B, how much resources you can burn within that time. So if you're um, financial constraint is extremely high. You may have to think in a very different way, which is completely fine. Whereas if your financial constraints are not that critical, if you have some time where you can study further, you should definitely try that out. Now, what happens if your financial constraints are extremely high? Then the best way to start is to uh, go for or apply for a job. Um, and this can be in, in uh, quite a broad area. So you can apply for a job in startups, especially if you have skills that you have acquired while doing your uh, bachelor's, especially maybe in programming or you have done something with Python as a, as a programming language. That's a very big area which is open, whereas you can also think about, uh, um, okay, we have a question. I will come to that question uh, a bit later. Um, and you can also think about applying even in a bank. So uh, the government service exams and so on. So if I take the whole picture, first you have to ask yourself how much time you have and how much resources you can offer to yourself based on your family condition. The next question you have to ask is, do you really love this subject? So if you want to go into academia and you actually don't have much of uh, interest in physics as a whole, this might be very painful because PhD is not something that you should do just to imagine that you will have the doctorate degree in front of your name. It will be a lot of pain through which you will go. You will learn a lot, uh, but you should not do a PhD just because, or you should not try to carry forward your career in academia just because you think, oh, it's, it sounds really good when I say I'm uh, a doctorate in physics. Now we have a question um, uh, which is regarding PhD in the field of, uh, in this field of broad wagon. So uh, this is a very specific question. Um, Shubhankar, uh, Devulna, maybe you can read the question for everyone and I will uh, try to answer this okay. question. Okay, sure. So Shubhankar Banerjee is doing masters in nuclear medicine at BARC Mumbai. And uh, he wants to pursue PhD or postgrad specialization in this field abroad. So where he should apply and how he will approach? Uh, we will in detail discuss about studying abroad with physics background in next uh, few weeks. Just to answer this specific question, uh, there are two big geographies where you can apply. One will be in US uh, where the application process is very different. The other will be in Europe. If you want to apply in Europe, the process uh, uh, depends on the country a lot. So if you want to apply in Germany, either you can apply through a scholarship. So you first apply for the scholarship and then for the PhD program. Or you can also apply in a university and in Germany, um, in a lot of research institute or in university, PhD is not treated as someone who is a student. It's treated as a job. So you, you get a job contract and you do your uh, project as a project manager, as a scientific project manager, and you get a salary. You don't get a scholarship, you get a salary. And at the end, you write your thesis and submit your thesis. In some cases, you can also put together your papers and submit it as a thesis. If you want to go to U uh, US, the process is very different. So there are exams um, like GRE, which you have to clear and go within a certain mark or within a certain band based on which you can apply in certain universities. And uh, it's a longer process. So generally you should keep a timeline of about 
one year, at least eight months to one year within your uh, spectrum of um, within, it will not happen within few months. So you have to prepare for GRE, you have to clear GRE and so on and so forth. Uh, in other countries in Europe, especially connected to this topic of nuclear med medicine, um, you can also think about a very special institute in Germany where cancer research is one of the top uh, rated research. It's called Helmholtz. Um, and in Helmholtz, uh, you can look for programs which fit exactly to what you have studied, which is nuclear medicine, and you can apply. Even you can approach a professor directly, which can uh, lead to a good result, but don't uh, um, expect that professors will answer your emails or um, if you write them something, they will come back to you immediately. So the best way to do this is if you ask your own professor under whom you are writing your master thesis or with whom you are working to offer you a contact with whom he or she have already worked. This is a very good way to bridge uh, this uh, gap. I hope that gives you a basic idea about um, what you can do after studying nuclear medicine. And we can uh, go to the next question as uh, we are getting quite a lot. Uh, yes. So the next question is uh, Mrin Moi. Uh, she's asking that, can you, sir, can you please tell about DRDO, their entrance exams? Because as far as I know, CEPTAM, septum is the exam which can be given. This is an area where I might not be the best expert to give you um, a detailed insight, but we have a plan that uh, we will be doing a session only focused on um, careers in physics in India. And that question clearly will connect to that specific topic and um, maybe Devolina will make a note of it and make sure that you yeah, get yes. the answer of this uh, question. Yes, we're already in the process. Uh, so please uh, wait for a few months. Uh, we'll get back to you and your topic will relate to that, this specific query. Uh, so next question is uh, from Bijoy Maji. I have interest in Python and quantum mechanics and electronics. So what fields are open after BSc physics? Okay, so what you have said, it clearly connects to a very specific field of physics, which is solid state physics. Um, I can imagine if you want to do something in India, um, which is which might be more theoretical in nature, because in India, um, experimental physics and theoretical physics have uh, very different proportions. So how much you can do um, is very different. Whereas in if you um, apply for a program abroad, it may um, deal with broader amount or, or broader area of physics. I can uh, also suggest that what you can start with is um, there is a master's program in nanoelectronics and nanotechnology in um, Germany, in uh, Dresden. And I can forward the contact as well, which you can use to apply for a master's program where there is also a scholarship. And that master, master's program is tailor made for uh, nanotechnology. Why? Because that connects to the semiconductor industry that uh, is in Dresden, uh, which is known as the Silicon Valley of uh, Germany. That is something I can uh, suggest you and I will forward the link to uh, Devolina ma'am and you can get uh, some uh, insight from that. And if you want to apply, uh, feel free. It's a very good program, but number of seats are very competitive. So it will depend a lot on your um, previous um, academic excellence and results. Okay. Thank you, Dipjati. The next question is from Oyan Bhomi. Can you please brief about GRE plus TOEFL and about that scholarship in Germany? DAAD. Uh, DAAD is a very small part of the whole um, uh, spectrum of scholarships one can get in Germany. Um, again, to, to clarify this, I will come to the GRE and TOEFL part in a, in a moment. Um, there are different kind of scholarship that uh, you can get in Germany, but 
it's not only about scholarship you can also get a job contract which happens in uh, germany quite not only in germany even france netherlands and the nordic countries like denmark norway um, is there something wrong of uh, mirkashim please stop presenting Hello Mirka shift stop presenting Click on the stop presenting the blue box the stop presenting Okay uh, Deepjyoti I think uh, you can continue because uh, there is no control over the participants actually So um what you can do is when it comes to studying in germany there are a lot of uh, ways how you can uh, get support one part of it is a job contract what does it mean in germany when you do your research in a research institute not a university um the research institute can offer you not a scholarship but a job contract which means you will get paid for doing research just as you would have got uh, if you Uh, work in a research institute and based on that you do your research at the end of the research you submit your uh, research work as a thesis and get your phd now there is another part which is scholarship uh, dad is one of them but there are a lot of other scholarships in germany that you can apply for based on some university have their own scholarship for very def definite programs as well as dad is more a generic scholarship which anyone can apply from any part of the world uh, connected to studying in germany how can you apply for dad scholarship that heavily depends on the program you want to apply for is it a masters program is it a phd program or is it a postdoc related topic and this you can uh, find out in the dad website so uh, i will just post the um, dad portal and you can have a look about this uh, last but not least if you are already doing phd you can also apply for dad scholarships which is for exchange students so someone can come to germany for a very short time do research and go back to their home country this is also something you can do if you have already started working in in uh, academia or if you are already doing research Okay. Um now about the uh, GRE and TOEFL part TOEFL is basically a language um uh, it's a exam where you prove if your language proficiency is good enough or not this can be also done with another exam called IELTS um and any of them is uh, something you have to book you have to pay for the exam and then appear in the exam and, and so on but it's basically just an exam for your language whereas gre is more broad depending on the year it can differ in context of what you have to appear for and um, this is something i i would say if you really want to get deeper into this topic uh, at present there are a lot of websites from which you can get free Uh, GRE material study and uh, give the exam you have to remember that just being qualified for GRE or just getting a certain mark in GRE does not mean you get a position in a university you have to apply for the position separately uh, and that's a very different uh, topic you have to also um, make sure that you have all your mark sheets all your academic records put together and uh, then only you can Uh, apply for this it's not uh, something you can uh, do by default just because you have taken gre so gre twelve together is one uh, exam uh, or one credibility exam that you uh, finish but after that you have to apply for the us universities 